and welcome back to Educator.com in this series on AP Computer Science. This lesson is on types, variables, and arithmetic operators. In this lesson, we'll first talk about primitive data types, which are built-in data types. We'll talk about variables, and then casting, and then something known as final variables, which is how Java implements constants. We'll look at the arithmetic operators, the assignment operators, and then finally the increment and decrement operators. Primitive data types are the data types that are built into Java. In the AP subset, there are only three that you need to be concerned with. Int, which stores integers or whole numbers. Double, which stores floating point numbers, that is numbers with a decimal or fractional portion. And Boolean. Booleans are values, uh, variables that only have two possible values, true or false. There are other primitive data types that are not in the AP subset, and these are listed here. I won't really talk about those in this course because anything that you need to do, you can really do with an int, a double, and a boolean. These others are provided for other specialized usage or uh, more memory efficient usage if you're running in a in a implementation with limited memory, but for the purpose of the the code that you'll be writing in this course and code that you'll be writing for the AP subset, int, double, and boolean are definitely sufficient. Int stores an integer or a whole number. And int in Java is always a 32-bit value. That means there's 32 bits of information that can be used to store that number. That means that the largest possible value that can be stored is 2 to the 31st power minus 1, and the largest negative value that can be stored would be negative 2 to the 31st. There are two special purpose values in the integer class called integer.minValue and integer.maxValue. And these are constants, or final variables, that store the smallest, meaning the most negative, and the largest, the most positive values that can be stored in an int data type. Double is a double precision floating point number. Now, floating point number means that the, it has a, a, a number that has a decimal point, so it can have a decimal portion. Integers don't have a decimal or fractional portion, but, but floating point numbers do. Double precision means that it uses 64 bits to store the value. A single precision floating point value, which would be a float, would be 32 bits. So with 64 bits, we can store considerably more precise data. You can store a much larger or much smaller value in a double than you can in a float or single precision number. The double precision number is stored as a sine times a mantissa times 2 to some exponent. There's one bit for the sine, 0 indicates positive and 1 indicates negative. Then there's 11 bits for the exponent and 52 bits for the mantissa, giving us a total of 64 bits. Boolean is a logical value, and the only two values that can be stored in a Boolean are true or false. Variables. Variables are memory locations that can store a value, and these values can be updated at any time throughout your program. So we declare a var variable by first giving the type of the variable and then assigning it a name and then a semicolon. Every statement in a Java program must end with a semicolon. That tells Java that you're done with that statement and what comes next is part of the next statement in your program. So you declare a variable, type int, you call it i, semicolon. You declare a double in the same way, you call it d, and you declare a boolean, and we call this one b. Now the Variable name does not have to start with the first name of the type. That's just uh, 
an example that I use there. You can name your variables anything you want to. Generally, if you're going to use an int for a very simple purpose, like keeping track of a loop, then it's typical to use very simple names like i, j, or k. Uh, if you're going to use a variable to keep track of something more sophisticated, then it's generally a good idea to name your variable some meaningful name, like average, total, sum, number, uh, something like that, rather than just using A, B, C, etc. It, it lets people reading your code more readily understand what the variable is doing. And because your free response answers are going to be read by human readers, it's very important that they readily understand what your code does. So I would suggest using meaningful variable names. We assign a value to a variable by putting the name of the variable and then one equal sign and then the value that we want to assign it to. And we must assign it a value that is consistent with the type of the variable. So in this case i is an int so we, do, we can assign it an int value. d was declared a double, so we can assign it a double value such as this. b was a boolean, so b can only be assigned either true or false. We can declare and assign on the same line. So here we declare an int called i and we assign it a value 10 right there on the same line. Same thing with doubles, we can, we can declare it and assign a value and a boolean we declare and assign a value. That's perfectly legitimate to do both on the same line.